But before that, I'll, I'll, I'll start with... Um, I do this? Yeah. I'll start with uh, what I was doing in Paris. I was at a conference um, uh, on something called Web Audio, which is something I, I work with, and I, was, uh, I visited this place. The conference was held at this place called uh, Centre Pompidou. Oh. And next to Centre Pompidou, there is this so super, crazy. super crazy um, audio slash music tech school called Urkam. So this is the building of Urkam. So the conference was in there. This is a really, really cool building. If you ever get to go, like all their cool sort of sound recording studios and stuff is underground. Mm -hmm. So the first mm -hmm. picture I showed you was I was standing here and like like they have this super like awesome room which unfortunately is closed. I was so I really wanted to go in there, but they have a ceiling which can, which can actually be lowered to like this level, cool. and they use that to change the acoustics of the room mm -hmm. to be able to record different sounds. It's a really really awesome place. Uh, it's really old as well, but so. It's interesting like, to see some old technologies and uh, how, how they're sort of trying to merge it with some modern you know, compu computers and stuff like that. Uh, this was some of the recording rooms. Um, so just like multitudes of loudspeakers everywhere for 3D sound and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, this was another cool room where it's like designed like in the 80s where there are these panels that you could flip and then based on what, how you flip it, uh, the, the acoustic of the room changes. So it's not really about maker spaces, but I thought this was something cool that I saw that you guys would love to see. Uh, more panels that you can flip and change the acoustics. Um, so then I, w I visited Le Loop, uh, which is this... Uh, so it's actually, it's like three hacker spaces combined in a single building. Uh, remember, me, it's, it's black. Black. Black, black right? Black, black is black. one, is, and then Le Loop, and then there is a... Yeah, I think it's just called that Black. That is the e-circuit place. Yeah, yeah. So there's like three hacker spaces in Paris uh, combined into one building. And it's in this weird thing where they're not really supposed to be there. Yeah, it's so a squat. It's a squat. So you have to know someone who has to open the door for you to be able to go in. Mm -hmm. So it's like really crazy. So if you ever want to visit that, by the way, just let us, like let me as any know. We'll hook you up with someone who knows well, like it's someone there? Oh, it's closed now? It's going to be a bit allowed in September. The government is buying back okay. to change to something else. So I'm guessing they'll find a new place at some point and then, yeah, but, but yeah, that was really cool. So this is like their lounge plate room. Uh, this is the guy who opened the door for me. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, so first we were checking out uh, the part which is the, 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 fab the, like yeah. the, the wearable technology lab yes. that they have. Which is crazy because the, there's a well, I forgot the name of the, the guy. Yeah, the, the, there's like he has a brand. I forgot. His yeah, name. also. I, anyway, <laughs> um, I, I can I can I can pull that up later. Um, so he does this all these crazy wearable electronics things, including this, which is apparently like a liquid crystal, like LCD that he printed, managed to print onto uh, a, a cloth based uh, like and, and whatever plat pattern you want, uh, and then he activates it for it to shimmer in different ways. I, I, like, I, I got confused halfway through when I started to talk about this stuff. Uh, it was like uh, all sorts of crazy wires and cables. So one of the, things, one of the problems with uh, wearables is uh, wires fray a lot. Mm -hmm. So he had these uh, really interesting wires. I have, they're supposed to be yeah, this one, which is like inside plastic, which you can bend and, 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 and twist until cows come home, but they won't break. Um, this was more conductive fabric that he was showing me. Um, Patchwork and and this, they, they they work with artists and dancers um, and they, they put on dance performances where you'd have all these blinky LEDs and like for like proper like you know legit people who do dance like for full time, <laughs> not 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 just gig dance parties, right? Um, <laughs> legit dance. Yeah, legit dance. Like you know, full time professional dancers. Performance art. Right? Performance art. There you go. <laughs> all sorts of old uh, machines. It was crazy. Um, yeah, just tons of stuff. Uh, and this was really cool. Uh, this was like a, it was a touch. Dis uh, and like it was so. This was basically the same thing that he was showing earlier, which was a fabric with uh, connective ink. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way he connected it up, you could actually uh, you could actually um, sense where you were touching it. So it was more like a touch pad, almost like you, uh, on your computer. Uh, but then the cool thing was it could actually uh, measure pressure as well. Mm -hmm. So it was like three-dimensional. So you, if you press really hard, it will, it will actually detect that. And then he added these, it was just like, you know, um, um, I don't know what material it is, like um, foam. foam or velvet or something, like really s simple things. 
and then the whole thing had like a tactile keyboard like mm -hmm. feel to it so you could like press and then if you press hard and it was really cool and the whole thing was just you know wearable so you could just stick that on your your, your shirt or whatever um, then this was down, so this was upstairs and we went down to like the main La Louvre space yeah. and of course it had to have the famous picture uh, if you guys don't know this is uh, a really famous uh, YouTuber he talks about electronics a lot Whoa. Uh, and this is a very famous uh, electronics uh, sort of god. Uh, he wrote some famous books, and and this is a famous photo of him, and this is a famous photo of him. So. Uh, uh, this was the electronics workbench. So people talking earlier about uh, not being sort of organized. Even the loop is pretty pretty decently organized. Um, somebody was talking about, oh yeah, you were saying earlier, Cindy, that uh, people are not very really comfortable taking photos in hyperspaces, so I... I didn't think because they were having a party. Yeah, so I asked around and I was told that I could take photos as long as it doesn't involve any people. So yes, if you notice, exactly. except for the first one, none of the photos have people inside. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, so there's tons of equipment. Uh, just, yeah, that's the one thing that La Loop has is just shit ton of stuff. Yes. Just like so it's much crazy. crap. Just, just it was nuts. Tons, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they have crypto parties and and yeah. So this was this was uh, Le Loop, and then I got really uh, lucky. I met, I, I ended up getting introduced to this guy on Twitter called uh, Gorgor, super funny guy. He does a lot of like he workshops does a and stuff. Conference. Yeah, he he, he does a squat a squat conf in uh, in Paris, and uh, he took me to this place called um, the Fab Lab in Paris. This is in there in the it, it's in it's called the City City de la Industry uh, Science. It's like basically the city of industry and science. It's like a big museum on the outskirts of Paris, mm -hmm. and they have uh, a fab lab which uh, has been around for a while, and it's really really cool. So so I went there with him. He took me around, showed me how things work. Um, so it was really nice. They had a bunch of machines, um, and they were being sponsored by Dassault, I think. So they had like some really fancy 3D printers inside, but to go into that room you needed like to do their workshop and like, you know, have safety and stuff like that. So we didn't go there, but there's a bunch of equipment outside and this is used for doing workshops for school kids or it's just like a normal membership uh, fab lab as well, you just you, uh, become a member and you get to use all this stuff. Sticker printer, super cool. It's actually the, one of the most, he was saying, this is one of the most used machine there is sticker printer. Because people just <laughs> print yeah. all the <laughs> crap, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, they had electronics workbenches, 3D printers, CNC mills, nice. uh, just tons of equipment. Uh, yeah, this was the inside bit, which I could I, I took a photo. So this is like a very fancy, like the powder. I don't know what it's called, powder-based 3D printer, where it's like the whole thing is a making some color. Yeah, so the whole thing is like a, a, a box of powder, and then they use laser to like um, uh, fuse, fuse. I forgot what it's called. Um, but apparently he was saying that the output of this is actually quite crap, and he personally prefers like uh, like you know standard um, like the ones that we used to uh, make a ba yeah filament based uh, maker bot type. Um, yeah, they had Charlie robot, which was like a CNC mill. Oh, this was really cool. This was a book scanner. So this is a book, right? So you so you 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 sort of pull it up. It was sort of a semi manual. You pull it up, and then there was a camera here, I think. Uh, and it would just take a photo, and like it, it was manual, so it, w it was just like a, a, a lever that pressed the button of the camera. So it was an old sort of digital camera, and they just like pull up, and then they one photo, pull up. Oh, sorry, two cameras, mm -hmm. one for each page. Take a photo. So it was all uh, they had all built it, designed and built it there, um, and then all sorts of weird sculptures. This was made from old computers. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, if you get French, this is exactly what the Fab Lab does. Um, otherwise, never mind. Uh, and then this was, yeah, this was like a spaceship. I, I, I couldn't get it really well. Yeah, made of keyboards. And I think this is like an old bowl or something. Start this real. Yeah. Wow. I know, right? Crazy. Uh, they had an LT maker. Um, this was really funny. Yes. <laughs> The machine has no brain, so use yours. <laughs> yep, and this was this what this is what happened when you had a sticker printing machine. You had yes. stickers, <laughs> just From tons of them. From brands? Yeah. Uh, where the brands? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this was my favorite sticker, by the way. Very, very, very French sense. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> yeah, this is the one he was talking about. So he said he printed, um, was it this one? Yeah, these two, he printed them from that um, powdered base 3D printer. Oh. And he said he had a lot of problems because apparently um, the way to do it is you print it out, but the whole thing is really crumbly. Mm. So you have to then dip the whole thing in some kind of a super glue. Mm. And then it's just like, it's a mess. So he, he was like, he was not really happy with it. Uh, this was what they were using for calibration. Uh, yeah, so then the last thing I did in Paris was I hung out... So you hung out at... Yeah, I... Ha oh, God. I should pause this. Pause. Yeah, I hung out at uh, this uh, startup, which uh, Cedric, if you guys know, used to hang out in, in Hackerspace for a while. So he works in this startup where they're doing... They're making this really big table. And the idea is it detects what stuff you, it's on it, and it's also a touch screen. Mm -hmm. And they had a DJ in that night who was testing out how this table works as a musical instrument. So I just took a small video of it. So based on how he changes the, the stuff on it and how he twists them and moves them around, different things will happen and different music will come out of it. Um, so I'll skip that. So the next one was, um, sorry, I, I don't have titles for this, but go ahead. It's not, it's, it's kind of the cheap version of Reactable. Uh, wow. Because the reactor was really expensive, yes, um, yes, yes, and this was like less than three thousand dollars, so wow. it's really cheap. Um, the next one, um, I was in Melbourne uh, a couple of months ago for uh, another conference, and I got to check out the hackerspace in Melbourne. Uh, a quick story there: I needed some uh, equipment for the conference, the workshop I was doing at a conference, and I didn't know where to buy stuff in Melbourne, so I just randomly posted on their uh, uh, forums in the Melbourne hackerspace. And I got like so much help. So if you guys ever need something in another like place, just go check out their hacker uh, hackerspace or makerspaces and just like ask people for help. And most of the time, people are super nice. Uh, I had people buy me stuff and keep it in the makerspace so I could go pick it up, or the hackerspace I could go pick it up when I was there. Like it was really really nice. So this was the Melbourne hackerspace. It's called uh, CHSS. I forgot the the community hackerspace something something. Um, they have a bunch of tools as well, uh, a lot of like hardware stuff. Um, yeah, they have small little kiosks where you can buy food uh, and drinks. Lots of laser, uh, 3D printers, of course, tools. Um, these are like personal boxes, um, containers. So there was a nice interesting story about these chips. These are like old ICs, and apparently. Um, uh, s silicon companies that were sort of running out of business would just like dump mm. their stock uh, in at, at this place and this place would just pick it up and just, they had like old old chips that like you know you can rarely find these days and then of course all the modern stuff but they, they apparently were telling me that they get a lot of donated parts for electronics from things that are closing down things that are wrapping up or uh, people have, go, have got extras that have nothing to do with it so is that the last photo I got? probably I do yeah, that's all I got. <laughs>